I'm Jonathan Lehman of Nine Marks and Cheverly Baptist Church, talking to Eric Bancroft, who's the pastor of Grace Church, a new church in Miami, Florida. Eric, in your article, Evangelize the Lost, you give five steps to remember when evangelizing. Number one, you say, be friendly. Like, is that, that seems kind of obvious. Do you need to say that? I think it's important for Christians to just recognize that the idea of exchanging relationships with other people, interacting with them, asking questions about their life so that we're not just trying to speed date a conversation to go from my name to here is eternal conversation to actually get to know them. And they realize the expression of the gospel care is really expression of care and love for them. Number two, you say, keep the gospel in view. Can you explain? Yeah, I think when you do get into conversations with uh, people who are not Christians, understandably, they're going to have all kinds of questions. Some of those are expressions of pride. They want to let you know what they already know. Some of those are expressions of curiosity of things that they're just kind of curious to know all about. What are the dimensions of heavens and all kinds of you know, trivialities they're curious about? And I'm just trying to remind the Christian to kind of bring back the gospel as like a roadmap. They're trying to walk that route in that conversation. Number three, invite them to be a guest at a Christian gathering. Yeah, I think sometimes the mistake that Christians can make meaning quite well, to be fair, is to have some kind of interaction with a non-Christian and then just say, you should come to my church. And that just often feels to the non-Christian as like a place that they don't intend to go to, be prepared for, get dressed up for. And I'm going to say, just try to ask them to think about a, a third space, a time where they're playing basketball, other times like this, where they're hanging out with other Christians. And that non-Christian feels like that activity they're going to share, that food they're going to eat, that game they're going to watch, that they take interest in. What they don't mm -hmm. realize is they get a chance to sort of see Christian community without it being yeah. so obviously presented to them as that's exactly what they're seeing. Number four, ask them to read through one of the Gospels with you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. That's what you have in mind. Sure. I, I think the idea here is for uh, Christians to realize the Word of God is inspired. It is living and active. It is powerful. And to let the weight, let the word of God bear the weight of that conversation of the gospel. That's not that they have to be like a miniaturized, gifted apologist, prepared for every possible scenario, carrying the conversation outlining according to it. Why don't we just ask them to read what Jesus has taught mm -hmm. as recorded under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit by his earliest of followers and let them kind of interact with the text. So that's where the questions are being formed from. That's where the conversation is being guided by. And that's just been a really excellent exercise. I think a lot of Christians don't realize it's right there in front of them is a good exercise for them to enjoy. And then finally, you say, keep the bigger picture in mind, fifth and finally. Yeah, I think the idea here is to just recognize um, while there's so much understandable desire and corresponding zeal and, and any of these actions put into action, these ideas put into action, um, effort to really want to see people come to faith in Christ and long for that and pray for that. To just recognize, as Paul even assesses his own ministry in 1 Corinthians, one man plants, another man waters, but God causes the growth. So God yeah. chooses to use the word of God to bring faith. And yeah. I just think that that is the joy that we get to have. Sometimes it's unseen. In fact, I would say probably a lot, many times unseen by us. But just recognize God is nevertheless being glorified in this labor for his glory, that we prioritize this as the mission of our life and bringing glory to him accordingly and just trusting the results to him. The article is Evangelize the Lost. You'll find it at ninemarks.org. Eric, thank you for your time in the article. Both very encouraging. Thank I you. People would read it and be encouraged to share the gospel today.